Today, I'm very excited to share the results of an independent survey I conducted about a week and a half ago. This survey specifically looked at Dolly 2's editing capabilities. So not the fact that it can generate an image or even generate variations of an image. Specifically, what do people expect from an AI-based tool when they're trying to edit and make changes just using natural language? In this video, I'll talk about the survey. I'll share feedback I got on my own art from the survey participants. I'll share sort of a summary of the different kinds of edits and changes people are looking to make with AI-based multimodal image editing tools. Uh, I'll talk about sort of some insights I got based on their qualitative feedback. Small, I'll, I'll briefly talk about limitations of the survey itself. Um, and I'll definitely be sharing my own thoughts, lessons I learned from this survey and, and why I think it's exciting and where it could go, what it could mean for the future. So anyways, today's video, we're just gonna be talking about this survey and Dolly's editing capabilities. So to start with, like I've always felt, and I've, I've talked about before on, on the channel that I feel Dolly's current editing capabilities are quite limited. At the moment, we can only add or remove elements. And on top of that, it's pretty finicky. Uh, you need to experiment with your different brush sizes. Uh, you need to really think about your prompt really thoroughly. And even then, sometimes not only does it not work, sometimes it will give you back the same image six times with no changes at all. So it's definitely a version one. And in general, I, I think, you know, uh, people, when it comes to AI-based editing, I think people actually expect a lot more uh, from modern... AI tools like Dolly 2. And so in order to understand fully what kinds of changes people even want to make with AI based tools, I, I conducted this survey. So I asked 32 participants to give me feedback on my own Dolly 2 generated art. Each participant was asked to assume they had access to a magical computer that could just make any change they wanted. They were also asked to score you know, the art, uh, you know, on various dimensions such as beauty and uh, originality and stuff before the change and after. However, in, in this post that I'll be, you know, I'm not really going to be talking about the quantitative side. We're just going to be talking about the qualitative side, which is what people had to say, what changes they would have made if they had access to a, a magic AI tool that understands the changes they want made. Uh, the participants, they, they were basically shown 10 images, gave feedback on each one. And, you know, there were some really surprising responses, which is why I'm so excited to publicly share the results of this survey with all of you and here on the channel as well. Um, and really quickly, I'll, I'll jump to the bottom and just show you uh, the survey itself. So this was sort of the landing page, uh, the instructions they were given. And I've included some example changes uh, just, just to encourage and get people to respond in a certain format. Um, then they were shown an image. Here's where they were ranking it before any changes. Here's where they put in the changes they would uh, themselves do. And here's afterwards where they could rank or sorry, they could, you know, give, give a after the change sort of describe on these different dimensions how much the image improved or decreased uh, along various things like meaningfulness, beauty, whether it's mesmerizing, that kind of thing. So uh, now you have an idea of what the survey looked like. So let's sort of, let's jump right in. So the first image was, again, this is generated by me. Creative Soulmates Digital Art was the prompt. Here's what it looked like. Uh, we'll quickly go through just this one. So. Uh, you can see there's a few things here, like this random thread of needle. Um, this is sort of cut off here. Um, so it's, you know, the framing's not that good. It's unclear what their emotional expressions are. Uh, and maybe it could use more stars in the background. That's my opinion. So uh, this is just an example, like, you know, there, there's maybe not a right or wrong way on how this image could be improved, but hopefully you get an idea just off the top of my head. Here's some changes I would make to this image. Now, here's some highlighted feedback I got across the 32 participants. So remove what looks like a needle and thread from the eye of the pink character, change their expressions, add design elements to the body of the green, green character, 
The pink one has a design, whereas the green one is blank right now. Very true. Uh, I would add in some cool clothing designs for each of the bodies. Some kind of top would look good on them. The stars in the background could use some extra glitter and attraction. Make it seem like the background is sparkling. Uh, instead of a solid background, <coughs> I would like to add in a brighter background. Image is too flat. Create visual separation between overlapping elements. Image is too, sy too symmetrical with no focal point. Change one of the characters to stick out more. Connect the character's line of sight to a focal point. Add depth by making the stars more blurred. Uh, so again, these are all very interesting changes. Um, and I think, yeah, they, they absolutely, if they were implemented by a, a future version of Dolly, perhaps Dolly 3, um, the image would be improved a lot. I got similar kinds of feedback. Uh, so this was, you know, a hot dog in the style of a Renaissance painting. Uh, the photo of a confused grizzly bear in calculus class. You know, we got some so got some interesting feedback here. Give the bear fur that is dirtier and less groomed. Notice how it's still a little bit too nicely brushed. Uh, give the give the bear the appearance of being stressed and disorganized. Add in some erase marks over the chalkboard. This will make it look like the person kept changing their mind. Uh, increase the contrast with the chalkboard and chalk writings. I definitely agree with that one. Uh, add birds flying around the bear's head. Uh, just a very nice storytelling element there. So uh, based on this qualitative feedback I had received for 10 images, so so far I think you saw three, I, I you know, just some handpicked ones I chose. I tried to uh, just even understand like what kinds of changes do people want made? Which do they want made the most? And since this is qualitative feedback, I thought one easy way to do this is to just generate a word cloud of the most frequent words uh, people use and things they want adjusted. So the word cloud, just looking at the top 10, uh, background is you know pretty important. They wanna change color, background color, background theme, image quality, image clarity. I can imagine uh, with AI generated images, there's a lot of just AI weirdness, right? Um, and it would be nice to make the images more clear, uh, less with fewer artifacts. So people want more control over that. The top 50 had, you know, new kinds of words like uh, center of attention, vignette, negative space, light sources, warm colors, not just adjusting the color. They want more warm colors. We can see that here. Left side, right? Maybe some positional controls. Um, reflection, maybe they want to adjust how the reflection is, maybe stuff like the shadow, right? They want to make changes to the character. Um, so the top, these are the, again, the top 50 most, uh, you know, the most used keywords. Uh, that's what this word cloud is. And it's letting us sort of understand, you know, how, you know, what categories do people want changes? So uh, judging by this, they want more control over the background, the background color, reflections, the character, light sources those kinds of things. Angles, really important. And the top 100 uh, ended up being, you know, we have many, many different things people want, categories perhaps of things people want changed. Uh, hair colors, positioning, creative theme, uh, emotional connection, second light source, <laughs> uh, color combinations. Uh, so these are all just, you know, very good ideas to draw from. Um, I went ahead and did a hand tally uh, because I felt maybe the word cloud was too too broad. And so for this image, uh, I counted uh, 29 times where participants wanted to change the colors in this image. Uh, 16 times they wanted to change some kind of character's emotion, expression, anything about the character. They wanted to change the background 11 times. They wanted to add or remove elements seven or three times respectively. They wanted to adjust the composition, the framing, the camera angle as well. Um, and then we had some light position scaling and, you know, adjusting textures, that kind of thing uh, towards the end. On the other hand, this photo of the red of a red dodgeball resting at the center line of a school gym. A um, lot of color change requests, a lot of background change, a lot of adding elements, 
But a big one that people wanted control over was lighting and illumination. So the way the lights are hitting this ball, the, you know, the way perhaps the shadow is cast, you know, the lighting of the background. Uh, obviously, because this image is, is photorealistic as opposed to this one, which is just an illustration, people want more control over s sort of staging it and lighting it appropriately. Perhaps they have a photography background or a film background where that's really important. You know, positioning and scaling was another thing people wanted to do. And uh, again, maybe this image could use a lot of work with composition, framing, the camera angle, that kind of stuff. Uh, so, you know, I definitely liked this hand tally approach. I, I think this one is good just for understanding at a very high level. Based on the most frequent keywords, what are the categories of changes people want? Obviously, color really stands out uh, in, in, in this view. In this one, you know, we get a different, we get a better idea, maybe more granular between the different images, what really matters. Color is still at the top. Uh, changing the background is high, character control. And then when you switch over to photo reel, obviously lighting and illumination starts to kick in. Uh, but again, color is, is still number one, more control over the background, number two. Uh, there's definitely a lot of similarities that help us sort of understand and prioritize the different categories, the different types of changes people want to see, perhaps from AI tools of the future. Um, in this process, you know, regardless of the colors and the frequencies, um, I also, you know, just qualitatively after reading different feedback, um, it was just interesting to see wh when people use natural language, um, how do they how do they describe the changes they want made, right? As, you know, if they're really assuming a computer can make any change they want, um, it's it's really cool to see how casual people can be about it and how much natural language understanding it even takes sometimes to make changes, right? That you or I could understand as humans, that I imagine is is trickier for an AI to actually understand and then implement. Uh, for example, uh, focal point, depth, I mean, it takes a fair amount of multimodal understanding, both in terms of the language coming from the user, but also to implement it and, you know, implement it in the way that the user is requesting. Um, and so focal point and depth, the image is too symmetrical with no focal point, change one of the characters to stick out more. Um, this would require a fair amount of multimodal understanding in order to implement add depth by making the stars more blurred. Um, in this case, the AI model would need to understand uh, that the goal here is to add depth, to make it more depth. And, you know, it would need to adjust the blurriness of the stars in the background in order to do so. That's as a courtesy, the user has included that, you know, make it make the stars more blurred. However, if it was just add depth, the AI would have to figure out what that even means. Um, you know, stuff around color contrast, flat colors. These are things that a human might mention to another human that, and, you know, I, I think the AI models will need to be trained and, you know, some more improvements need to be made in order to get them to understand uh, the goals that humans may have with color changes as well. Um, I, I sort of building on that, I also noticed like in, in my view, some of the hardest kinds of changes for AI to implement are what I call these advanced categories of changes. So these are typically, I feel, changes from what I'm observing. These are changes that deal with, you know, things which are emotionally expressive. Um, and, you know, they require a higher level of natural language, text and multimodal based understanding um, because you not only need to make the change but you need to make the change to fit some ideally emotional goal or perhaps even some kind of storytelling goal. So, um, for example, I would add water streaks on the ball, almost like the ball is sweating. This would give the impression that the ball is working hard. Now that's a, again, this is a storytelling tool and the multimodal model would need to understand like the goal is, you know, storytelling wise to make the bottle make the ball look like it's working hard and you know the implementation is to then add these water streaks and make it look like it's sweating right uh add two opposing players standing over the ball as if they're about to engage in each other uh, again storytelling item the i would need to understand that you know we're adding sort of a a competition element to this image um 
And so it would need to understand that there's some storytelling going on and also implement those changes as well. Um, and, you know, I mentioned earlier that for the confused grizzly bear image, uh, you know, the, the, the respondent, you know, had this idea of adding these spinning birds around the bear's head to indicate confusion. I think I also saw in the feedback as well to add claw marks onto the chalkboard behind him to indicate his prior frustration. So, um, this is also a very exciting, uh, emerging area perhaps of, you know, the, the, the level of changes people want to see made from multimodal AI tools in the future. Um, and I think these ones will be trickier to train the model. It really does need to understand not just the natural language, but also uh, the image and the storytelling and the thematic, the emotional goals of the image. Um, so it's, it's just exciting to, to share that here today. Um, now, the survey was really limited. I'm not going to spend too much time on this section. Like, I think this is a good pilot study, you know, like this is something I did independently with a really small budget. Um, I, you know, I didn't have too much time. There wasn't a team behind this, but like, you know, I only asked 32 people perhaps, you know, to get to uh, 100 people would have been, you know, a better practice. Respondents couldn't skip an image. They had to give feedback on every single one. The hand tally approach I used to discover these categories like, you know, it's pretty subjective. It leaves room for misinterpretation. There's, you know, there's the chance that I may have miscounted on any of those things. Um, this survey is not necessarily grounded theoretically in how people value and perceive art. Uh, I'm not going to talk about all these things. Uh, uh, yeah, one other, you know, big critique I have of my own survey is um, I asked them to critique the art itself. However, if it was, for example, a shoe design and I asked them, don't critique the art, critique the actual shoe or critique this lamp or whatever, a uh, movie poster, whatever, um, I imagine we'd get different kinds of feedback. So, uh, you know, perhaps in future studies, they need to incorporate industrial design or graphic design or make a separate study about it. But that whole area, I don't feel did a good job capturing it. Um, and, uh, Anything else from this? Um, yeah, I would have liked uh, more diverse images. Again, this was my own Dolly 2 art that I asked for feedback from. However, you know, company logos, different, you know, other people's art, getting feedback on that, all of that would make for a more robust study. Uh, further, further research is I, I think uh, it'd be cool to ask people to rank the changes. So Again, they could make a color change, they could make a positional change, they could make such and such change. Which change out of five options would, would they, would they, how would they rank it? And, um, you know, perhaps how would the perception change before and after that change? Uh, because I definitely think not all of these categories that I've outlined um, are of equal value. Like so far, we're seeing color is really valuable. Uh, and so maybe that's an area to address first when it comes to editing capabilities for multimodal AI models like Dolly 2. Um, so now I'm just going to talk about my, my personal thoughts. So the big thing I found is I, I definitely agreed with most people's suggestions. In fact, I think I was blind. Like I, I liked my images and art so much that I, I sort of ignored their flaws. And now looking at it from the lens of the different feedback I got from the participants, I agree, these images could have been a lot better. And if I had had control over the AI model to edit and make changes, it could have just led to a better image. Uh, right now, like I mentioned, Dolly 2 is really limited in its editing capabilities, but if I had it, we would have had better results. Um, you know, probably the biggest finding of this survey is Dolly's current editing capabilities, mainly in painting. They do not sufficiently cover the breadth of natural language editing requests, which I found here. Uh, many of the features like control over lighting and illumination, color, these are not supported by Dolly 2 right now. Um, and so, you know, the big takeaway is more work needs to be done. Not, not only more work ne needs to be done in the editing capabilities for Dolly 2, but just, you know, greater alignment is needed between natural language, which users would use to edit 
as, as well as the model itself. There needs to be more alignment so the model can understand what kinds of changes we want, what we mean, and implement it. Uh, the good news is that, you know, a lot of people did request uh, to add or remove elements, which is currently supported by Dolly 2. And, you know, this was a consistent category across the board. Um, and so even by improving the current Dolly 2 editing capabilities within painting, you are creating value uh, for your end user. Um, yeah, and sort of my last point I, I said was kind of... Um, I think if you had more diverse art examples, if you asked way more people, uh, you could come up with a very, very good count or hand tally with, with more with more hands on deck. Um, you know, you could compile pretty much, hopefully, most kinds of changes users would want to make. Not like so. Maybe there's other things beyond lighting, illumination, color. Um, and you know you could perhaps offer greater coverage over most kinds of changes people would want want to make. Um, I, I think an even wider survey could also capture that long tail of edits um, that are you know of that advanced category that I described, where that it's not just about making a change; it's about making a change that connects to some storytelling, emotional goal, thematic goal. And so with a wide enough survey, you'll probably accumulate more of that kind of feedback. And you can then use those examples to sort of build better editing capabilities. Um, and lastly, I sort of, you know, this entire survey is open source. So you yourself can take the survey here. You can check it out. Honestly, it takes about two hours to complete. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I recommend that for everybody. Um, I've uh, already included a, a spreadsheet of, of the qualitative. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a document. I've included a Word doc of all the qualitative feedback per image. So this is one image. This is all the feedback I got. Um, and so you can see all the feedback here for all the different images in the survey. Um, and uh, you can also check out this spreadsheet here. And this is the raw data of all the responses I got from all 32 participants. Um, and this, this link also includes the quantitative data as well, where they're asked to rank it across different dimensions. So I, I, uh, I'm not sharing, we're not discussing that. I'm not sharing the analysis here, but the raw data is here in case you want to make your own analysis on top of the data. Um, so anyways, uh, there you have it. So this is again, this is a natural language image editing art critique survey. Uh, the main findings of, of the survey is we're just scratching the surface with Dolly 2's current editing capabilities. Um, you know, and hopefully as a result of this survey, we have somewhat of a better idea what kinds of categories, what kinds of changes, what buckets of changes people are looking to make. And it seems clear to me, at least based on the survey, color is a, is a really big one. Um, and of course, I, I'm personally very excited about the opportunity to also make these advanced kinds of changes like storytelling, emotional, thematic kind of stuff as well. It'd be really exciting if future AI tools can can make those changes as well. So anyways, uh, the link to this article is in the YouTube description down below. Please let me know in the comments. What do you think? What kinds of changes would you like to make? In what ways do you think this survey is flawed? Uh, how have you found Dolly's editing capabilities currently? Where has it done well? Where has it not done well? Um, and are there any big categories here that, that you don't see that, that, that you think were missed that, that are here, but you know, you would find yourself changing a lot. So anyways, thank you so much for tuning into this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.